you can start and it will be you know online yeah. for those of us who, who are not here to watch yeah so my name is Knut Lukas and I'm going to talk about augmented reality virtual reality and some about the variables such as uh, oculus rift uh, since uh, uh, Christine covered most of the uh, augmented, I won't go back through that much. I will just use the definitions and then move on. Talk about some of the different gears uh, and variables within the field. Uh, the first report I'm going to talk about is a comparison of two, two cost differential virtual reality systems uh, for perception and action task, which is mainly they compare two different uh, virtual reality systems, uh, one that has high cost that is used within scientific and research field and others that are mainly video gaming such as video chemistry. Uh, the other is more the presentation of a uh, simulation system by combining education and augmented reality to learn students how to handle flooding. And, uh, for instance, if there rains a lot and such, but it's from my understanding, it's more of a documentation than an actual experiment. And finally, I have the sources and the, for the images and, uh, and the other stuff that I used in the presentation. Um, so, according to Wikipedia, augmented reality is uh, alive or live, direct, or indirect view of a physical, real-world environment elements uh, augmented by computer-generated sensory input, such as sound, graphics, uh, or GPS data. Uh, according to um, another report that I read that's been told it's from 2001, uh, they have a definition that AR systems uh, supplements the real world uh, with virtual or computer-generated objects that appear to coexist in the same space as the real world with the following properties. It combines the real and virtual objects in a real environment, runs interactively and in real time, and registers or aligns real and virtual objects with each other. So basically, you can have, uh, I can just quickly show it next. For instance, here, you can see, you have yeah. Yeah, in to the top left, uh, a video feed of the real world with a virtual vehicle flying around, for instance, or you see the other two where you have like he's holding at the hand and there's like a virtual bear standing inside it and some sort of games that are mostly from Wikipedia. Um, and then there's also, I didn't find any scientific definitions of the virtual reality, so I just used Wikipedia's, which is that virtual reality is uh, sometimes referred to as immersive multimedia. It's a computer simulated environment that can stimulate physical presence in places in the real world or in the action world. Uh, virtual reality can recreate sensory experience, which include virtual taste, sight, smell, sound, and touch. But uh, as far as I know, uh, there have been cinemas which have tried to include these effects, for instance in 3D cinema, where they try to simulate uh, uh, wind and smell and such, but I have yet to see, see any, any a scientific proof that this, this is virtual, uh, virtually possible because from my understanding they're saying that if you're connected to for instance Oculus Rift uh, and you don't have like for instance a machine creating air or creating smells then you should like if you're playing World of Warcraft and you're eating in-game food you should like taste at least taste like bread I don't think that's yet possible because I think you would need some sensor that Lure, uh, tricks the brain into thinking that you're eating. For instance, take the matrix. Uh, <laughs> the, the whole basis is that machine uh, tricks the humans into thinking food they're eating are real. So I think that's more on the sci fi side than the real side of as of now. Uh, some of the different variables uh, are, for instance, the Oculus Rift. This is probably more of the most known one by now. Uh, it's mostly used for gaming. Uh, it's a headset with, uh, for virtual reality. Uh, and according to the company, it's created in an effort to re revolutionize uh, the way people experiment, experience interactive content. Uh, Kinect is by Microsoft for the Xbox, uh, which is basically user interaction by movement. 
uh, you have the holodeck, uh, which is also something Microsoft is work, uh, working on. Their, their version is called uh, Room Alive, which is a virtual reality platform. And there's also CMI holograms, which is basically because they have in Japan, which I want to show you, you the video now, uh, 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 sort of like you have the hologram, but like they say, it's not a real hologram because it doesn't take up the physical space. So this is the Microsoft Room Alive, where you can see that um, these, it's not that good because you see it on here, but you can see there are like images. They use a lot of cameras projecting light on the walls and surrounding area. And then you use either tools or physical interaction that kind of like, you can see she just smacks the vehicle or shoots the objects. Uh, and here, for example, you see rockets, rockets coming out and such. So I'm not sure how the sensory works, but I have the link in the presentation. So mm -hmm. I'll send the presentation to him, to Marius afterwards, so you can read about it because it's all an article. But I have just a, a YouTube video because just to show. And also earlier today, I found this video, uh, which is uh, using Oculus Rift, uh, where you can see what you see on screen is what he sees with the glasses. And it's like kind of impressive how detailed it is because you don't see the glitches when you move it, he moves around and it's like the in lack of a better word the steadiness in the graphics are pretty impressive because often like when you're gaming you can see glitches and you, if you think about that this is trying to simulate a real world environment with him underwater and the shark and everything else floating around it's kind of impressive like just watching it and finally, there's a hologram. And it's, uh, again, it's kind of impressive because it looks like a doll. But you can see, like, from a distance, you can see the afterglow around the figure showing that it's not a doll, but it's like the realism is kind of fascinating uh, when you look at it. And she's the, the one that sings. Uh, is also not a real, they're actually using a synthesized voice for this version, so they're actually, uh, this is a, called Hatsune Miku, but they actually have a system called Vocalite, which they sell, so you can create your own songs by using synthesized voices, to, and you can create your own figures, for instance, I had a child at the version once, where mm -hmm. you could create these figures, put it on your mobile, mm -hmm. put it on live camera, and you can put it on the table, and you can see Charity standing there dancing on the table, like, uh, sort of like the, there, uh, which you can see there, just that you have these 3D characters instead. Uh, and then I have like added two fresh sheets, just for a short discussion. Would you define Google Glasses as an augmented reality gear? And what about 3D glasses and three-dimensional cinema or television? Yeah, what do you guys think? You can also put the relation with the videos, the videos I just showed you. It's kind of like... There isn't a right answer, just so to say that there are, of course, some definitions around Google Glasses, but like it's... What do you guys think? Technical, I would think, about the Yeah. Google glasses. 3D, 3D glasses and 3D things. Like, usually think about when you think about augmented reality. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Because you are supposed to interact with something, aren't mm. you? So with TV, you just interact with the remote. And, and the content doesn't really augment the real world content. The TV is generating a world for you and then you have a 3D glasses to be sort of Im more immersed than with the flat 2D TV, but it's not something which augments the actual real room, right? Uh, in a sense it does, but you know, not in a meaningful fa way <laughs> because it has no relation to the room you're watching the TV on. Uh, so probably I would say the, sec the second one is probably not an example of augmented reality technology. It's 
a kind of immersive technology, but more on a virtual reality than augmented reality. Yeah, it's more like an optical illusion of a hologram that's yeah. under the air. So. And with Google Glass, have you tried Google Glass? Um, it well, so if you do wear it, you have a, a tiny display above your one of your eyes, which can display stuff for you, and it's sem semi-translucent, right? So you do see a little bit of the you you see the real world around you, and you have that extra display. But if you you know, it's sort of like if, if you take the phone and have the phone here, so you can look at the phone and see the real world, right? It's like that. Is that augmented reality? Not no. really. <laughs> no interaction. Not not really, right? Uh, um, so it, it kind of uh, it, it provides you context. You can because you can like I, I can look at her and it may tell me okay you know she is the student of IMT fourteen ninety three and blah 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 right I can get some information here, but it's. It's not really augmenting her. It's sort of giving me extra information. It's really like that, right? Is that augmented reality? I don't think so. <laughs> yeah. It, it's sort of borderline. Yeah. And, uh, but you can see here on the downside, it's a um, Canadian researcher who has done a lot of stuff within the wearable part when it comes to augmented reality. And you can see like from the 80s until now, <laughs> <laughs> walking around, it looks like a box with an antenna on it. Like until today, or ten years ago, when you just had these glasses with a uh, uh, microphone on. Hmm. So it's kind of kind of amusing to see because, like, when you see the old ones, you think of like the. Yeah, it's like the, how the, how they like pictured it in the eighties in the movies, where they um, uh, actually, I don't have that image here, but I saw an image from where they had a picture from uh, Back to the Future. I mm -hmm. think it was the second or third movie, uh, where they actually sat in the living room with these sort of glasses. And it was like the title of the article uh, and the text under the picture in the data actually was like, Now it's 2015, and look where we are. <laughs> <laughs> so it was like they had an amusement with that the fact that like this is what the picture in the 80s, beginning of the 90s, and this is actually where we have become, so it's like, kind of amusing. Yeah. Um, yeah, so the article, the first article I want to go through is basically more related to the systems, which is comparison of the Oculus Rift and something called the NYS S60, which is basically used in the research and scientific environments in colleges and universities and others that work with the research part of developing such systems. Um, and the, the re main research question for them was, if it was a higher cost system, basically the standards that we use within the scientific, uh, better than a low cost system, for instance, those used for gaming and uh, video games, uh, when it comes to uses, usage in the context of research, learning or training. And uh, what they did then was trying to combine the virtual reality system with the, the use of those or other sensors to interact with the virtual world. Uh, and uh, so the system they tested was uh, uh, an NVIS NY60 head mount display with the cyber low tool lows. And the low cost system was uh, Oculus Rift Developer Kit 1. Uh, Razer Hydra mo motion controller and the Unity 3D game engine. So they used the Unity 3D to create the environment and then they used the Razer Hydra for the hand movement of the Oculus Rift for actually visualizing and seeing and walking around in the virtual world. Uh, they had two different experiments. The first one was an egocentric distance estimation and the other was task completion. Uh, in the egocentric distance uh, estimation they had a total of 24 participants, 12 male and 12 female, with an age range of 18 to 23 years old. Uh, and the thing about the selection is that, like, they are on a new university, they picked students from their own university, there were no rewards, they just sent out flyers and asked people to sign up uh, or participate. Um, 
So my my like the thing I'm thinking about is that it's questionable whether this is repre uh, the the end results are rep represent rep representable for a larger population, but at the same time. The experiment is based on research, it's for research, it's like, can we do all the research we're doing cheaper and perhaps invest more in other things than the systems? So I'm, I'm thinking like it's a two-sided coin. Yes, it's relay, it's useful selection, but at the same time, maybe not, because it's related to this university and if this university is just technology, then mm. mostly people will have a, a a certain degree of knowledge when it comes to virtual reality in regards to if you have picked an example from all economics. Yeah. Um, so that's exactly what Simon was talking about with self-selection from the groups yeah. which, which we are representative. Yeah. Um, so representing. So we are not a representative sample of a general population because we kind of self-selected technologists which are interested in technology. Yeah. Um, so it's, yeah. The, also, the experiment was conducted in a laboratory, but then again, you don't have that much choice because you're using equipment and you need to have a certain degree of ways to connect it. So it's like I have a hard time seeing how we could do this other way in another place. Uh, and basically, the experiment was based on uh, go entering a virtual world and is staring at an object uh, in a given distance and then estimate how far away that was and they were like they were not allowed to look down so they had like restraints on their neck to <laughs> just see straight ahead mm -hmm. so they showed in the distance a red puck uh, they had like five seven and ten meters by the three distances they offered with if i remember correctly uh, and then they were like after they had the um, test the participant had like said like okay i think i know what distance it is uh, they were blindfolded, taken out into the hallway, and then they walked what they, the number of uh, steps they assumed the distance was. Mm -hmm. uh, and they, they did this a total of 11 times, where it, the two first were for training purposes, just to like, get acquainted with the system. Uh, as for task completions, uh, they had like all the participants do the same, uh, same tasks, but they were different orders, so they like, uh, they, they were the same order of the task, but they were like randomly who was in the first and the second. And after each uh, task completion, they had a break and filled out uh, a simulator sequence questionnaire because two of the participants uh, were excluded from the result because they got so much motion sickness from the low cost system. Mm -hmm. And uh, the number of participants there was almost half because they were just. Seven females, six males, and uh, a bit higher age range. And as you can see, there were three different tasks. There was sort, uh, sorting, search, and view. Uh, the sorting was basically you got uh, presented with boxes in random order, you just, um, which you can see down here, with the, a number from zero to nine, and then they were to like virtually sort them. And there you can also see images from the Oculus, or how it looks like the equipment. Um, and the goal was to sort these boxes as fast as possible by, by using the virtual, virtual game. The, the search part of the assignment was, uh, they were presented with 16 birdhouses, uh, where eight of them contained red balls and the rest contained blue balls. And the goal was basically to locate all of the eight blue balls uh, by visiting the birdhouses. And if the birdhouse contained a red ball, then they changed that ball into a uh, blue because they didn't want them to like you recognize them by familiarity to find the balls. They just because the goal wasn't to test the movement, but they wanted to test how it was to navigate within the actual virtual system using these types. Uh, and they had a total of three trials in this, where the first was for uh, training purposes. Uh, and the data they measured was um, the time used, the number of birdhouses visited, and the number of birdhouses that was revisited. Uh, and finally, the last task was uh, a view test, where they basically just saw 
three different environments and then they were to tell like which felt like they were more present in or which seemed most realistic to be in. Um, the end result was a bit surprising for them because the, they found out that the low cost, of, uh, low cost system was actually equally good or better than the standard system when it comes to the actual interaction or the being inside the virtual world. Um, but, um, and they looked at how they could improve the local system, but as they found, for instance, one of the things where that uh, one of the pre improvements would increase the cost by one third. So it's mm. like, like you said, they, we can improve it, but it will increase the cost. So it's like maybe not so good to do that. Um, but one thing that the high cost system did better was there were no participants that got motion sickness, whereas the there was the 15% that got sick from using the local system mm -hmm. in some sort. So the conclusion was that the experiments showed that the local system could be used in the same context like the high cost system, but uh, they also say that they need to do a bit more research and stuff to like ensure that these results are actually correct. Mm -hmm. they, they see a possibility for researchers to use the local systems more. Mm-hmm.